Aloha and welcome again to ThinkTech. Welcome to the Art of Thinking Smart. I'm the guest host. My name is James McKay. I'm uh, stepping in for Michael North today. Um, unfortunately, Michael North's uh, daughter has some health issues in Vancouver, so he's um, unfortunately not able to join. And we wish him and his family the best for the, the operation. So. The show today is called Investment in Innovation, Pacific Style. And today we're talking uh, with Shinoa Farnsworth of Blue Startups. And they're working hard to build um, a whole innovation series of companies in Hawaii. So we have a short uh, video we'll show, but if you want to tweet us, you can tweet us at thinktech-h-i or call us at 415-871-2474. Um, so again, Shinoa's work, managing partner at Blue Startups. We'll have a quick look at the video for an introduction and then we'll have a chat and talk story. I mean, this is a rather dated video, so uh, she'll be discussing a bit more where they've gone from when this was filmed. Well, so you can't hear the narration, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, bluestatups.com. <laughs> All right. So it looks like a lot of fun anyway. That's what innovation's about. It's not about hard work and um, just not having a fun, but also enjoying what you do, I think, is probably one of the key things of the successful um, innovators. Okay, so sorry about the uh, sound issues with that video, but you can definitely check it out on the website, bluestartups.com. And so welcome, Shinoa, to the, to the studio today. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for making the time. I know yeah. we all have busy schedules. So, yeah. um, Would you like to tell us a bit more, since the video <laughs> didn't have a lot of information about Sure. What is Blue Startups and yeah, so how do you guys fit Blue into Blue Startups is a venture accelerator. Uh, it was launched here in Honolulu in 2013 uh, with funding from the state of Hawaii and uh, in partnership with the Tetris Company, um, which is uh, run by Hank Rogers and his family. So Hank and Maya were heavily involved uh, from the beginning in that uh, you know, birthing of Blue Startups. Uh, we've now done uh, nine cohorts. We're in our ninth cohort right now. Uh, which means that 70 startup companies have come through our program. Wow. Uh, the program is a combination of investment and mentorship. Uh, so we provide a small amount of seed funding, uh, up to $100,000 in stages, and a heavy dose of mentorship. It's a 14-week program, 13 weeks here in Honolulu and one week in the Bay Area, uh, with over 100 mentors interacting with our um, companies, and giving them advice, and helping them grow, right. and all that good stuff. And is there, it's more of a technology-based focus, is, right? It uh, is technology-focused. Uh, primarily, we're focused on companies that have global ambition, so companies that want to scale globally. Mm -hmm. So we don't serve uh, small businesses, but uh, high growth. Right, 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 right. And I'm familiar with the what's called now the Elemental Accelerator, which mm -hmm. used to be the Energy Accelerator. Yeah. And obviously, their, their birth spanned a lot more than energy, so it makes sense that yeah. they rebranded to the Elemental Accelerator. Mm -hmm. So that they, in my mind, would be the two foremost in, in incubator hubs for bi businesses in Hawaii starting mm -hmm. and expanding. Their goal, too, is also like global change of sustainability initiatives generally. Right. So how do you guys sort of play together in the incubator space? Is it yeah, I mean, we're, we're good colleagues and friends. In fact, <coughs> the the Elemental Accelerator, when they were Energy Accelerator, ran their first program out of our space at Blue Stars. Right. And uh, we've been, been partners ever since. Um, 
you know, when we get a good uh, application in their space, we send it over and we try not to duplicate effort. Um, so we're really, again, more pure play tech and they're in, you know, the spaces of energy and water and um, security and some other things. Yeah. So uh, there really isn't much overlap. Um, in terms of the type of company that we're working oh, with. Oh, which is good then, obviously, yeah. if there's a clear focus, but. Yeah, you know, I, I work a little bit. We've had like one, I think, company in common, which is Smart Yields. Um, okay, yeah. yeah. So that's them. the ag tech company. Right. Yeah, so we both had, had that company come through our program. Yeah, and so they can do both. They can, there's yeah. There's no reason why if you've got the time and the Many interest. Many people in do both. Uh, we've had companies do both Elemental and ours, and we've had companies do uh, Accelerate UH and ours. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I mean, if you're a startup in Hawaii, you think you, you need all the help you can get, so <laughs> you might as well take advantage of all the resources we have. Right, you know, so good segue for this show, the uh, I Think He's Smart. So obviously Hawaii is not the easiest place to start a business and to keep it running, and yeah. we consistently get pretty low grades of, if you're gonna start a business in the US, Unless yeah. you really love surfing and sitting on the beach, don't come here. Yeah. But um, what what do you think then are sort of some of the key attributes of the the individuals that mm -hmm. make up these companies that mm -hmm. that do succeed here? Like are there mm -hmm. a list of things that you've sort of identified over mm -hmm. your years mm -hmm. of doing this stuff where you can be like, aha, mm -hmm. there's a, a secret sauce, a recipe, or? Um, I don't think there's a secret sauce. It's just a lot of hard work, and uh, those that are willing to work really, really hard are the ones that are succeeding. Uh. Uh, it's a pretty, actually, uh, straightforward equation. You know, if I see an entrepreneur who is going home at five o'clock every day, uh, I, I already know they're not gonna succeed. <laughs> it's, it's just a guarantee. But your video had them all like stand up paddleboarding on the beach yeah, and we, hanging out. Yeah, we totally believe in, in having fun and taking advantage of the beautiful environment here, but that has to be balanced with a heavy dose of working really hard, Right. you know, because it's a competitive environment in you know the world, right? So, what I tell my companies is there's somebody right now in China, in India, in you know Yugoslavia, wherever. Uh, Vietnam They're, actually heard us now. Vietnam, quite a Malaysia, yep. that are working their butts off, yep. you know, on this same idea with this same product, tackling the same market, which is the planet. Mm -hmm. So you can't you know think you're going to get ahead by being smarter or being, uh, you know, more efficient. On it's just hard work. Yeah. That's it. Oh well, disappointing lessons of today. Then. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, there's of, no uh, shortcuts to success. Get our free cards, but <laughs> so and and on that, so like if, if like maybe talk about you personally, if mm -hmm. you don't mind, like, like the history of how, like where did you come from? How did you end up where you are today? And maybe is that for you? You've just kind of mm -hmm. worked where you wanted to be. Did you set a strategic goal? Because obviously, goal planning. And achieving those goals yeah. are crucial to any any business. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd love to tell you, yeah, you know, when I was five, I, I said, I'm, I'm going to be a venture capitalist and I'm going to take over the world and these are the ways I'm going to do it. it. You know, my career has been much more material than that and opportunistic, right? So things, I gravitated towards things that I found to be stimulating mm -hmm. and exciting and interesting. Yep. And I've just tried to basically stay <laughs> in that mix of things that are interesting, exciting, and stimulating to my mind for the bulk of my career. Yeah. You know, once I'm bored, I'm gonna go do something else. And so the startup world is, you know, a good match for that, right? It's, it's constantly evolving, it's, it's ever-changing, it's, it's, you know, every day is a, a new challenge, a new day. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's definitely no room for getting bored or, you know, feeling like what you're doing is rote or not impactful. So yep, those were yep. the things that I think mattered to me most. So I just tried to like stay in it. Yeah, and you're in an interesting role, obviously, because you kind of oversee all these companies. Because it's kind of like you're you have all these little crazy kids doing all these really interesting things. So you're just sitting yep. at the dinner table. What did you do? What did you do? Oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's uh, there's definitely the mommy analogy it happens a lot. I'm called mom bear. I'm called mother hen. I'm called. <laughs> I thought I just made it know. up. So. No, <laughs> it's definitely the case. I am in real life a mom and in work life a mom. And um, people always ask me, you know, which of my companies are my favorites, and I'll say. They're all my children. I love them all, you know. Yeah. Um, which, of course, is not true. I do have favorites, but uh, you know, there is definitely that kind of role that you play, and it's a it's a tough love kind of mom, you know. Yeah. It's so not, you obviously, you can't be soft. It's not if, coddling. It's not it's not nice, you know, necessarily, but it's uh, strict and demanding and uh, but supportive. Mm -hmm. you know? 
And are most of the companies that you are mentoring, or is that the right word for it? Yeah. Incubating, whatever. Mentoring, are they uh, like mostly from the Hawaii community, or you do get a lot of? Yeah. So actually, the way the program is designed, we is 50-50. So 50% of our class is always from Hawaii. Um, because we are state funded and also that's part of our mission to serve the local entrepreneurship environment here and 50% of the class is from outside of Hawaii. Uh, those that are coming from outside of Hawaii come from all over the place but uh, we have in recent years been targeting more and more Asian entrepreneurs. Um, you know we think Hawaii is a great place for doing business with Asia you know where East meets West and and we have a big event called East Meets West every year where we bring in entrepreneurs and investors from both sides of the Pacific. Yep. Um, so that's a big focus for us. So uh, recently we've um, you know, recruited teams from Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore. Um, so you know, we're, we're looking more and more in that direction uh, for deal flow and specifically looking at companies that are interested in getting into the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the niche for us. And, and vice versa as well. We look for companies from the U.S. that want to get into Asia. Uh, we think, again, something unique that Hawaii can offer in the world of startups and accelerators that nobody else can. Yeah, Ge offer. geographically, obviously, we're very well positioned yeah. for that. And culturally. Culturally, you know. too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons for that. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it's a great model. And obviously, that's uh, it's a very global economy, as you know, yeah. today. So yeah. you can't be kind of looking at one state in the Midwest yeah. now. Yeah, so we like the mix of you know, offshore, in-house kind of mix of a culture and mix of, you know, work styles and, mm -hmm. you know, it's good for our local entrepreneurs, I think, to see the pace at which the rest of the world is working often, yeah, you know. Breaks them out of their shelter yeah, a little bit. It's like, oh, okay, I see that guy never goes home. Yeah. You know, we yeah. have a team right now from Portugal in the, and I don't think they go home. And I haven't been there when they're not there yet. Wow. So, and that's, that's what it takes. Yeah. So um, th that's an interesting uh, model, and I think it's great because one of the sad things, and I've only lived here about six years now, um, and I moved from Arizona, where you know it's built on cheap real estate and mm. just building new suburbs every month, it seems. And so obviously housing there is very affordable. Um, I'd say cheap compared to Hawaii. So it's sad, I find, when I hear about, I say, graduates from UH that yeah. can't find work here, so they yeah. go to the mainland just because they're cost of living is lower, thinking they'll come back, and most of them don't. Mm -hmm. So that seems to be uh, an unfortunate side effect of the increased cost of living here. So mm -hmm. we kind of, in my opinion, need these companies to be putting down roots locally just so the graduates have, have somewhere to go. Yeah. Um, so on, on that note, uh, is there a, a sort of a program or a, a sort of an emphasis on your companies when they're recruiting to say, partner with UH because you've already mentioned UH, Accelerate UH, which mm -hmm. should be another incubator, but mm -hmm. obviously you want good talent that's yeah. smart, passionate, right. capable, which a lot of these graduates seem to be, uh, but they're also, another word, pretty cheap. Like they're cost effective, right? <laughs> if, they, if you can get someone that's a brilliant student yeah. that's very capable, they are willing to work for a lot less than, well, me, say, for example. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think it's recruitment is a huge issue for our company, right? It's a huge issue for the industry, right? In tech industry, there's a huge war on, you know, talent right now and trying to secure talent, trying to keep talent. I mean, it's it's everywhere, right? So we, we talk about the problems of, of not enough talent in Hawaii, but it's really that problem is universal to this industry. In San Francisco, it's 10 times worse mm -hmm. you know, just because of the competitive environment there. So, you know, we do encourage our companies to, to recruit and, you know, some have really put down roots here. It's starting to happen, but it's a slow process. And uh, many do feel like they have to go to the mainland to succeed. Still. Interesting. So, you know, what I would say in terms of like where we're at, we, we have this very kind of robust early stage startup scene. Mm -hmm. You know, past a certain level of maturity, it gets pretty tough. And then some of that's real, some of it's perception. And you know there are things like cost of living that, you, that are hard to get around. It is expensive to live here. Yeah. It's more expensive to live in San Francisco right now. That's one benefit we have. <laughs> we can no longer say that it's more expensive than San Francisco. You know, so I can tell you that that's at least we're on par in terms of cost. But there are a lot of other advantages, obviously, to being there. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a constant battle that we're fighting, I think, to keep our companies here and, and to also retain talent. And, one of the things we've, we've wanted to do for a long time is kind of a 
you know, more of a Kama Aina, come home program where we're, we're putting out the call to Kama Aina, like, hey, there's programs here. You can, if you're going to start a company, come start it at home, right. you know, or, or bring your company here or, what you know, come and join a company that is here, uh, that sort of thing. So it, it's hard to organize that effort, right? There isn't like this list somewhere. Of, right, it's a whole oh, Ina, You know, here they right. are. You can send them an email, <laughs> you know. It's more of a word of mouth kind of thing. Right. And Coconut Wireless. Yeah, but I think, you know, the reputation of Hawaii and Startup Paradise is growing. Uh, I don't go anywhere now where I, they haven't already heard about something happening in, in Hawaii. Like, I'm not sure what's happening there, but there's something happening there. It's kind of the, you know, the reputation right now that we have out there in the a startup world globally. So I think that's our opportunity to take advantage of. All right, and so, so on the topic of innovation then, do you think is there more that the state could do to help foster this environment, say in regards yeah. to sort of tax credits or even mm -hmm. say like UH, mm -hmm. State Institute? Sounds mm -hmm. like you're tap for good resources. So maybe that, mm -hmm. that sort of network of what they're pushing towards needs to ramp up their IT side maybe on the graduates or yeah, I mean, I think it's really hard, you know, for government support uh, to be done in the right way and to be done consistently. I mean, we got started with government support, um, and so we're, we're really grateful for that. Um, and I think there are other programs that we could do in addition to the programs that are supporting the accelerator. Uh, you know, I'm a, I, I don't know how this would, you know, take place, but if there were a way to, you know, um, kind of, uh, ameliorate the, the cost of living issue for startups, I think that would be huge. You huh. know? So a, a work like package. housing or, yeah. you know, I mean, I don't think it has, it could be something out of the box. I don't think it has to be tax policy necessarily. I mean, that's the first thing that people think of when they think of incentives for businesses. Um, but I think, you know, it's very simple things like just make it easy for people to move here, live here. Um, it's very hard for our companies that come in for our program. Housing is the number one issue. Interesting. You know. So you could have like a yeah, a welcome to Hawaii pack where they're yeah, sort of it's exactly. all one one package where they can move into even an incubator space where That's it could right. be co-housing or something. That's right. I think oh, uh, I would love that. And you know, people want to come to Hawaii. They, they, any excuse they could think of to come to Hawaii, they're gonna they're gonna do it, right? Well, you think you know, and then if you're providing them a welcome packet, I think. Um, that could go a long way, and I don't think it would actually cost the state that much. Mm. You know, it, it really, I think, could be a very cost-effective way. Of right. So it sounds like a good bill, maybe, to propose to some legislatures that really understand yeah. the yeah. issue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. But yeah, I know, like everything, you've got too much to do. Yeah. Like never enough time to do it. It's hard to lobby. It's, it's a lot of work. Well, that know. could be maybe another topic would be a uh, Time management and priorities of tasks and how we schedule that out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So uh, I think we're due for a break soon, are we? Because um, we'll, we'll be back um, and we'll uh, have a break and we'll be back in a couple of minutes to chat about time and task management, I think is a good one. Uh-oh. You can be the greatest. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Aloha and welcome back. James McKay, guest host for Michael North on The Art of Thinking Smart. And today we uh, join Shanoa Farnsworth with uh, Blue Startups Hawaii and we're chatting about what makes companies, startups specifically, work in Hawaii under her program and leadership in these programs. So we, we left on, on the, the break of talking about how we could uh, create legislation to help mm. more of these companies do better here, put down more roots, create local employment and doing so might entail some 
additional legislation which mm. would foster sort of the if we don't ta everyone hates tax credits right that doesn't pass it's like how do you create jobs and affordable housing happen. is the issue I'm so yeah. uh, you know, like and I think every startup's probably challenged with that like there's endless things they could focus on mm -hmm. so you know I'm in the space of energy like I could be writing energy legislation the entire day mm -hmm. and I don't earn a cent so that's not a good use <laughs> of my time so in these programs uh, your applicants sort of pre-qualified, the experienced people, or do you have to provide a lot of them with, say, time management skills, email mm -hmm. management skills? Well, I mean, I'm sure everybody could use time management and email management skills, and sometimes we do have workshops on that, kind of personal, more personal growth and how to manage and how to grow a team, how to manage a team, how to lead, things like that. We don't spend a lot of time on that. We do spend more time on the nuts and bolts of running a business. So, you know, how to do financial projections, how to go to market with the product, how to acquire customers, what that's going to cost you. Um, what does your customer even want, right? We, that's how we start the program, right. customer discovery. Make sure that you're building something people want to buy. Um, some really simple things that uh, often are skipped in the entrepreneurial process. Because mm. you know, so the entrepreneurs generally are so passionate about their product, <laughs> yeah. they just think it's going to be the next Vegemite, maybe? Absolutely. They, they, 100%. You realize that was a terrible analogy. No. Well, that in my very popular. <laughs> All the fans. Right? Yeah. We'd, be, <laughs> we'd be stoked if we had the next Vegemite, I think. They'd probably make a lot of money oh. in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah nowhere else. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're going global, right? It's going to yeah. be peanut butter or something yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> peanut butter would be good. Yeah, so I think, you know, they come with different skill sets, and we try to complement those. And we're also, we do some coaching, you know. We'll say, hey, you know, we notice that you're coming across this way. Because so much of success in, in this realm is, is personal, is relationships. Right, definitely. Right? Are Especially in Hawaii, right? E everywhere. Yeah. I mean, are you instilling competence when you go and meet with an investor? Right? It, that's about a whole host of things. Your body language, your actual language, the content that you have, you know, the facts that are backing you up. I mean, it's, it's a whole series of things. But if you go in looking sloppy, uh, you know, talking, uh, you know, in a disrespectful manner, things like that, it, it's very easy to turn people off. Mm -hmm. And they simply don't care how good your company is, yep. right? Yep. If they have any reason to distrust you as a person, and really it's, that's the main issue is trust, then they're not going to write a check. Right, right? exactly. So or I want to do it, have anything to do with your business. I yeah. think that's... I mean, so the people are the most important part of the equation for us, right? Is, is this the person that's going to take this idea or company from point A to point B, you know, and if it's, you know, if it's not the person, but the idea is brilliant, it's really easy to get lured in by that, and we've done it many times, trust me, I'm, I've been a sucker for it so many times, but it, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day how brilliant the idea is if you can't execute on it, and if you're not the right person mm -hmm. to carry that ball, it's going to fail. So in that situation, do you sort of tacti tactfully or diplomatically kind of suggest they add someone to their team? Obviously we try. We try. We definitely that. do. I mean, it's, there's a certain point in the program, it's our halfway point, where we kind of switch modes from being supportive to being tough love. Like, okay, oh. this is Seems now... Like most of my relationships. Yeah, you know, yeah. We're, we're seven weeks in, and here's what we've observed, right? And these are the things that you're going to have to address right. in order for this company to succeed. And, and many of them are personal. You know, this, you are not going to be the CEO of this company if it's going to succeed. You're going to have to replace yourself. Right. Or you're going to have to build your team in a complementary fashion. You need a person that knows this. Or, you know, whatever the, the issue is. So so can you talk, too, about, say, the, the ideal company? Say, if you've got one or two that yeah. you think are just the... Because this is, you know, the, uh, what people want to take away from this program is how can they be that company, I guess. Yeah. How can they emulate success? Is there a couple of companies that just are stellar on every level that stand out? I mean, there's probably no company that's stellar on every level, right? But there are certainly companies that had, uh, I'll take uh, Volta Technologies, for example. That's one of our companies, right? They had a great idea, so that's a building block. They had a great founding team. That's the next building block, and it has to be a team. And that's the other thing we see a lot are solo founders. Mm. We can't invest in solar fo solo founders, and we won't put them through the program. We've, again, learned our lesson there. Mm. You cannot execute as a solo founder in the way that it's needed, in the fast enough pace. And Is that because simply there's just really things. too much to manage there's for one just person? Too much it's to just do. physically impossible, yeah, right? Yeah, it's just too much to do. Yeah. And it also is, is generally a signal that 
you know, maybe you're a control freak or, you know, <laughs> then the, those things will come back to haunt you in other ways. You know, you, you're not able to let go enough. You're not able to bring other people into the company, mm -hmm. all, all of that. So, so team is really, really important for us. And then, you know, within that team, definitely it, you have to have a leader, you know, and it is not an egalitarian process. You know, when people come in and say, we're 50-50 partners and da, 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 I'm like, oh, boy, you know, like, you can say the who is the CEO? Tell me right now, because you're going to need to know that. And there is no such thing as 50-50 partnership, right. right? Somebody has to lead this thing. And ev all humans respond better to that kind of uh, scenario than they do to the multiple head kind of organization. Yeah, because I guess if you have any, you know, any decision point, you don't want to be stuck in. It's that. It's, it's everything. Democracy. It's just, uh, it's, you know, having vision. It's leading the team. It's all of those things. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's a whole combination of, you know, of that, that that makes it important for that person to be leading all right. the company. So hard work, no I in team, perseverance. <laughs> I think that's probably my three. <laughs> And Those stop surfing so much, which good. is I'm not going to listen to. So You can keep surfing. You just have to work so hard to yeah, make up for gotta, it. Yeah. I never surf with a watch. So. All right, Chanel, <laughs> well, thank you for coming in. I okay. really appreciate it. I yeah. hope you guys have uh, learned a lot out there. And uh, thanks again to David Chang from Wealthbridge for hosting this show. Uh, original founder. And again, best to Michael North and his family. Um, and quick recovery to his daughter up in Vancouver. So I hope it goes well. And uh, we'll chat to you again soon from Think Tech Hawaii. Again, I'm James McKay with Amoresco, and have a great day. Aloha.